Hello everyone and welcome to He Makes Me Play. I am Marius and I'm blind. I can't see and so I make other people play video games and I'm here today with my friend Vincent. Hello Vincent. Hello Marius. How are you doing? Doing pretty okay. Seeing... Ready to read a lot Vincent? Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> because today we're playing Wayhaven Chronicles. That's right. This is a choice of games game but it is a hosted game so that's actually a different publisher right? It's like it's if you look at it on Steam, yeah. you you will find it under True. hosted games. And as far as I understand, that means that choice of games who publish these sort of choose your own adventure novels, they allow you, dear viewer, yes, I mean you, to write your own <laughs> choose your own adventure novels and have them be published uh, by choice of games. That's how I understand uh, it. Vince, mm -hmm. do you agree? Is, is this how, sure. how you understood it? Yeah. It's a bit complicated. The best intro we had on the channel yet, I think. So we're doing great already. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not all me. I actually asked on Reddit and we got some recommendations. Thanks, guys, for like the best choice of games game. And like this is what we got and or what we chose. There were actually a couple candidates. Infinity Saga was high on the list. Everyone mentioned that. But uh, Lords of Infinity, it said it had 1.6 million words. And then we immediately <laughs> closed Steam and like had to go for a smoke or something. Yeah. I don't know. It was a bit too much, guys. <laughs> Sorry. So we picked Wayhaven Chronicles by, I think it was written by a, a person called Mishka Jenkins. Mishka Jenkins. That's yeah. right. Uh, and this is a hosted game. So it's like third party content. And it's about m mystery stuff in a small town. Yeah, and we, I we think. are some sort of maybe noir detective. Yeah, and we'll see. if you've seen anything on this channel, you know that this ticks all our boxes <laughs> and this is why we chose this. Uh -huh. And this is enough intro now. Let's get into it. Like, let's start the game. Okay, so as usual, we have... Uh, <laughs> start the reading, Vincent. Yeah. Get to it. Uh, just some uh, surround stuff. Um, we have the show stats and menu at the top. Um, and that's it. Is this the exact same as our previous attempt at these games with Choice of the Dragon? Almost. I think there was one extra button, but I don't okay. know what it was. Um, but maybe yeah. now you can't save the game. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. You probably can. <clears throat> so, moonlight slices through the beakers on the top of the laboratory counter. A hundred shafts of light bouncing off the pristine, polished surface. Precise lines of glass tubes held in stark white cartons are piled on the center island. Dr. Ethan Murphy enjoys the small space of his lab, one he has worked hard on making his own. He is grateful for the comforting quiet it brings and is, at the moment, even more thankful for the size of the large counters. They fully hide his crouched, shuddering body as he hunches behind them, biting his lip to stop his shuddering breath giving away his position. Mm. Toot toot, Dr. Murphy. Nobody likes a coward. The taunt is followed by the smash of glass, shards of the broken be beaker glancing across the linoleum floor. And these words. Dr. Murphy squeezes his eyes shut and grips his knees closer to his chest, his teeth biting down into his bottom lip hard enough to draw blood. The squeak of the intruder's shoes on linoleum stops. The air falls silent and heavy, pressing down like a way on Murphy's tight shoulders. If you don't want me to find you, Dr. Murphy, you shouldn't make yourself so tempting. The voice echoes from nowhere, a hunger growl from the darkness. Murphy's eyes snap open as a warm drop of blood dribbles from his lip and soaks into his trousers. He wipes the blood from his lips and chokes back a sob. There's so much more. That was the first page? That was the first page. <laughs> <laughs> God, I feel a little bit sorry already because this is a lot of reading. This is already like very much more novelly than <clears throat> Choice of the mm -hmm. Dragon, right? Yeah. It's well, not like it's not bad. I feel like we're right in the situation, uh -huh. right? The stuff yeah. happening. But Absolutely. It's very not very literary, you might say. Yeah. Go That's on, Vincent. A fitting first line. But it's too late. Mm. A hand lurches from the dark and snatches at Murphy, like claws around prey. Such an irresistible thing, don't you think? The man whispers, his face shadowed, but the glint in his eyes unmistakable. When his tongue laps over the smear of blood on Murphy's hand, the doctor retches and tries to crawl back, 
Gerling as the hand grips his tongue, as the hand grips his tighter. The crack of bone perforates the silence. Dear, dear, he tucks on Murphy's mangled hand, dragging him over the slick surface of the linoleum. I don't want to break you, doctor. Murphy is yanked up onto his feet. The intruder is the same height as he is, but appears ten feet tall in the gloom. Shh. He places a firm finger on the doctor's lips to stop the trembling cries. Then he takes Murphy's hand in both of his, staring into his eyes with the intense, paralyzing gaze only a predator can achieve. Why don't you relax? <laughs> the words reverberate like a haunting echo inside Murphy's head, bouncing from one side of his skull to the other until he sways with dizziness. A swath of calm seeps from his head down into his neck, following his spine and reaching right down to his toes, until he stumbles back from the suddenness of his mu muscles relaxing. Murphy smiles as at the intruder and takes a deep breath. Much better, the intruder whispers, before plunging his teeth into Murphy's throat. Oh, no. Vincent, I suspect a prologue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a prologue. It might be. Oh, I see a first choice coming up. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you wish to keep reading? Yes, no? <laughs> what, no. you want to take over? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. that'll be the day <laughs> when I read to you uh -huh. uh, <laughs> from some kind of Braille tablet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would, Hold on, let me would, figure <laughs> out the first letter. I just got to Google this real quick. Uh -huh. Anyway, I'm, talking, I'm taking everyone out of the story. No, it's just Continue, fine. Vincent. I, I, I need a moment to relax, so it's great. It's very emotional. Um, well, this guy is like sort of dying, right? I, I By the way, you have a good, creepy villain voice. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, the next morning in Wayhaven. Ah, okay, we're somewhere else. There was a lab and someone got killed there and stuff. Yeah. Probably. By being bitten. Yeah, by a creepy sort of... Someone who, he sort of charmed the doctor, yes, right? And, and then maybe like a vampire, sort kind of, of yes. creature. And he did he have like a henchman? Did I just understand I that right? Don't think so. Where did the hand come from? It was all the villain. Yeah, it was yeah. the villain grabbing the hand of Doctor of the Doctor Murphy. Yeah. No, what was his name? <laughs> I, I think Murphy is correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of a little bit of a cliche name. We were yeah. like, we made this. Uh, we, this was a joke earlier uh, off camera. I said, "Hey, wouldn't it be funny if like Jim Butcher just published like his chosen or <laughs> your own adventure under yeah. a pseudonym?" And uh -huh. now with him being called Murphy, <laughs> I think I may be onto something here. Uh -huh. Like yeah. in the Dresden Files, there's a character called Murphy. Anyway, mm -hmm. continue, Vincent. Meanwhile, uh, somewhere also, else. Um, I, just remembered um, the creature, the attacker, uh, licked the doctor's blood, right? So even more pointing towards yes, being all a signs vampire. point towards the creature of the night. <laughs> Nosferatu. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yes. Meanwhile, the next morning in Wayhaven, mm -hmm. the crime scene is a wiggling mass of spectators by the time I arrive. Even this early in the morning, people line the small alleyway packed so tightly I can't believe they are able to breathe, let alone fight for space to see the end of the street. Rubbing the engine of my battered silver, silver hatchback does little to gain anyone's attention, and I realize I can't park unless they move. Not wanting to be late to my very first case as Wayhaven's newly appointed detective, I, mm. and we have a choice to make. Number one, beat my horn at them. Mm. Number two, park where I am, number three, lean out the window and order them to move, or number four, lean out the window and ask them to move. Okay. Interesting. That's, I'm intrigued by this because, <laughs> like, look, it's already different from the Dragon Book because it's first person. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Dragon true, Book was true. in second person. It yes. always said you, you, you. And here we already, we are an I, and it makes me feel like we are an established character, right? Uh -huh. We can't, like, we don't have to choose our wing color and stuff, and if yes. we're disdainful or whatever. This is already a, a very integrated character. Um, and now we get to sort of drive him for a while. Yeah. That's so cool. What, what kind of character is he? 
Yeah, that's the question here, right? Also, I'm not done. I mm -hmm. want to say it was a prologue, but it was a short one, so it's okay. Yeah. Normally, prologues are lame because you get to see something that then never comes up again. But this isn't the case here. Presumably, we're at the crime scene of exactly what happened I mean, before. If, if we were at a different crime that scene, would be it would hilarious. be ridiculous. <laughs> like it's just, oh, somebody's <laughs> smuggling cocaine over the border. It has nothing to do with the vampire. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I mean, you could still tie it back together later, but it would that would be a lame kind of prologue. Yeah. Um, let's see. I do want to see what happens, Vincent. So I, I would say, I don't know mm -hmm. what your choice would be. I would say just do the reasonable thing and like ask them to move. Okay. Yeah, yeah, lean out the window would definitely be my choice. Yeah. But um, like, yeah, ask them is fine. I roll down the window of my car and balance an elbow against the door so I can lean out as far as possible. Hey guys, can you move yourself, please? I'm the detective here for this crime scene. It's very friendly, not very authoritative. True, but we had the option to order them. You're right. I shouldn't complain. My words don't inspire the quick motion that I'd hoped, but the buzzing, buzzing crowd does reluctantly part. I drive further down the alleyway. Managing to park, I crank on the handbrake, trying to ignore the paint crunching sound the car makes. Out of habit, I glance into the rearview mirror, quickly checking my appearance. I brush a hand over my... <laughs> oh, we get to choose the object that we brush over? N no, the color of the object. Oh, okay. Um, we have... Ebony black hair, light brown hair, dark oh. brown hair, mousy brown hair, light blonde hair, honey blonde hair, dark blonde hair, deep red hair, bright red hair, <laughs> strawberry blonde hair, or we're bald. This is like the scales and color of the dragon. Yeah. Uh, obviously we're bald, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The bald skull. Yes. <laughs> I brush a hand over my head, <laughs> figuring there's little else I can do to procrastinate. I finally force myself out of the car. The chill air bites at my skin as soon as I step out of the warm comfort of the car. Mm. I shove my hands into the pockets of my coat, shivering at the relief it provides from the sharp cold. All right, what's the riding on the body here? Butts may be clinging to the few stark trees lining the alleyway, but it is far from spring yet. It looks as though most of Wayhaven has gathered at the scene which is more likely true than not, considering the whole town consists of less than a thousand people. As I step mm. up to the blue and white striped barrier, I'm greeted by Officer Len, a part-time volunteer on the scant Wayhaven police force. I wonder for a moment if his hunched posture is from the grisly nature of the crime or just his advanced age. He looks up from his pad and I can almost hear the creaking in his bones at the motion. I wait as he speaks to greet me, his voice croaking out from his thin lips, partly hidden by a scraggly grey beard that matches the colour of his skin. Finally, he says, We can say, Credential, Credentials, please, miss? Credentials, please, sir? Or credentials, uh -huh. please? Well, this is interesting, Vincent. It, this is so different than the Dragon Book, because yeah. do you see what's happening? We get to make a choice, but it's like... It's not for us. For the other, like, I, I was going to say NPC. Yeah. That's basically. very, it's a different stance, is what I want to say, right? Yeah, but I think this is an outlier because it's still referring to us, right? It's, You're right. We have a decision for us to make. Yeah, it's, and it's asking you to choose your gender and stuff. Yeah. Which is cool. We already chose ball. <laughs> this is kind of a dick move because, <laughs> I mean, I guess technically, and we're totally going to do it, but usually women aren't bald right that's uh -huh. not i can say that it's statistically true mm -hmm. and it lets you be bald before you get to choose the dinner but now we have to be a lady because we're just you know maybe we're a cancer survivor vincent who knows oh grizzled old cancer survivor possibly. are we grizzled and old i thought the other guy was grizzled and old yeah he is but it's okay. just I don't know, Survivor sounds grizzled and old. It fits the theme, I feel, though. Yeah. It's kind of, also, was his name Lamb, as in L-A-M-B? L-E-N, Len. Oh, Len, okay, never mind. Because Lamb also fits the theme, a sacrifice, maybe. Mm. Perhaps. Yeah, anyway, whatever. We'll keep uh, so that. can we choose... Um, Credentials, please, miss. Yeah, that one. I let out a long sigh. Are we really going to do this, Len? 
<laughs> started working as a volunteer long after I joined the force. Sorry, but the major's orders, he replies. I'm hesitant to open my coat after just managing to get warm, but I pull one side open to yank out my badge and ID. I hand it over, then not even glancing at it before hand handing it back. His eyesight may be bad, but even he cannot fail to recognize me. All good, detective. No, not with the head of hair of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there she comes. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, all good, detective. Step on through. That's such a dick move. Just yeah. Good entrance, please. Len is um, a bit of a troublemaker. Yeah, just immediately hands them back. Um, I take back my ID and dip under the barrier, Len is struggling to keep raised. As I move away from him, I glance down at my new ID. Detective. It's the first time I've been addressed that way by one of my colleagues. Mm. It's strange to hear my new title. It belonged to old Detective Real for so long that I'm not sure if it fits me quite yet. After all, the only training I've had was the rushed speech I received from the mayor, addressing my many merits and how <laughs> to show my willingness to take over. That's the, the only training? Apparently. They recruited her right out of the cancer ward <laughs> by <laughs> no, a, no, I an inspiring speech from the mayor. Matters. She was a police officer before that. Oh, I missed that. The, okay. the training was for being a detective. I see. I, I have hope. no idea what it means to be a detective, except they're sort of more intellectual in the movies it's than just, just a, a beat cop, you know? Yeah, it's just a higher-ranked detective. No, the, the, the police officer. <laughs> okay, I, I see what saying. you mean. Yeah. Is that the case? I, I actually don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just rank. Okay. Mm, where were we? Uh, <laughs> how to show my willingness to take over, exactly. The total of my detective experience probably amounts to that hour he spent lecturing me. The promotion was rushed through in time for Real's retirement party, leaving me spinning on how to react to the whole thing. And we can say, number one, I didn't even want the promotion. The captain forced it on me. Mm. Number two, I was so excited for the pro promotion, though I wasn't expecting it. Number three, I wasn't surprised by the promotion. I've worked hard to get it. Mm. Or the last option, I didn't really want it, but I wasn't going to turn it down when offered. Huh. So, well, I like one or the last one. I, I have no clear reason. I just feel like for this detective lady that we're creating, number one feels sort of like the most, sort of like the tough option, right? Mm. Yeah. She's it's, like a film noir, absolutely grizzled a, detective. Usually the they are not exactly anti-establishment, but at least anti-authority. Anti-anything. Yeah. Right. So I didn't even want the promotion. Yeah, the captain forced it. Yeah, me. and like it's just a cooler story because it's <laughs> like it's like vampires and shit. Uh -huh. I didn't want this. Well, now you have to deal with it. Yeah, detective. We don't have a name yet, right? No. Maybe we get to choose that. Anyway, say we were forced. Okay. It was a surprise when the captain offered me the promotion, though it was less offered and more forced. The captain was thrilled enough, needing someone in the station of a senior position, so he could go off and play golf with the mayor whenever he Ugh. wants. I let out a heavy sigh and shake my head at the thought. My photo stares back at me from the ID pouch. I glance over my details, my name listed boldly at the top. Please enter your first name. Ah, it just wants us to enter it, yeah? Uh, well, we have five options, or we ah. can say none of these, and I assume, like in Choice of the yeah. Dragon, we then get to enter one. What are the choices, though? Uh, Lauren, Emma, mm. Dina, Kira, Serena, or none of these. I like Kira, because it reminds me of Major Kira from Deep Space Nine. And she's like a tough, authoritative, get-shit-done lady. Okay. Let's, pay, let's take it. Let's take it. I think she was called Kira. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, too late now. Please no. enter a surname. Ah, Knightley. No. <laughs> That's uh, a different Kira. <laughs> well, we have Langford. Ah. Kingston. Kira Kingston is not good. No. Uh, Batra. Kira Batra. <laughs> Lynn. Green. Although I always wonder with this name. It's like green, but with an E at the end. Do Green-y. you pronounce the E? No, I don't I, think so. I, 
hope not. Depends, I guess. Uh, or we can choose our own. I guess. What was the first one? Uh, Langford. Kira Langford sounds like a detective to me. Sure. Let's take it. Let's take it. Finally here then, Detective Langford. That's right. <laughs> that sound good, yeah. I glanced up the sound at the sound of a familiar voice. A smile already on my face. Officer Tina Ponan strides towards me. It's a different police person now. Yeah. From then. Okay. Officer Tina, Tina Poname. Poname. Poname is a weird <laughs> name. Yes. <laughs> it's like the author was coming up with a name. It's, it's, uh, name, name, come on, something. Poe, yes. Poe name. But Poe is too short. We need something. Yes, if they will think of Edgar Allan. That can't, that's not what I'm going for here. Yeah. Um, anyway. So, Tina Poname. Uh, strides towards me, my old partner grinning at me as she nears. Not much of a surprise, they're, they're all gathered here, she says, gesturing to the crowd behind us. I look over my shoulder at the bustle of people, sunlight glinting off the phones held ready to take whatever pictures they can. Yeah, oh, I'm getting so impatient, I need to know what's actually happened here now. But I guess it, uh, I always imagine this to be like somewhere in the 70s or 80s just because you know that makes sense stuff. Yeah. but um glinting of the phones held ready to take whatever picture yeah it's can. more modern very ballsy yeah. move because it's, it's in my mind it was literally just twin peaks that's just where it is because that's me yeah. i guess but uh -huh. like it's it's interesting because these fucking phones, man, they destroy stories, <laughs> like, in every way. That's why, you know, this whole renaissance with, like, Stranger Things and stuff of stories from the 80s? Mm -hmm. I have this theory that this is just done by a sort of conspiracy of authors who just now set every story <laughs> pre-1999 or whatever, just because people don't have smartphones all the time and you can't, like, you know what I mean? So many stories rely on you not being able to just call someone and tell them oh, yeah, something. The famous chasing scene through the whole house to the one phone yeah. yeah you just call the police because you always have a smartphone uh -huh, yeah. you could literally ask your apple watch to do it for <laughs> yeah. you hey siri call yeah the police. and i okay. guess now we have a cool story where we can just solve stuff with our apple watch yeah so yeah let's see uh, how this is being handled uh not much of a surprise they all gathered here she says gesturing to the crowd behind us uh i looked over my shoulder at the bustle of People, sunlight glinting off the phones held ready to take whatever picture they can. Yes. This is probably the biggest thing that's happened for years, mm. I reply with a shrug. She nods in response, brushing back a few brown curls that bob in front of her hazel eyes. I can't help but notice none of these fancy dancy silver spoons that uh, have bothered to show up. What does that mean, silver spoons? I don't know. Okay. Aliens? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> or I first thought it was like FBI agents or something. I don't know. Maybe something like that. If this is a murder scene, we don't know yet. But or I guess, no, it's just a rich people, right? Silver spoons. Yeah, true, but it doesn't really make sense in this case, does it? Let's just continue. Yeah. Uh, her nose wrinkles as she speaks. The freckles splattered over her nosy, rosy cheeks, becoming more pronounced with the expression. I detect love interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't suppose they care what happens to us normal folk, as long as no one touches their mansions. But anyway, how's the first day of your promotion going? And we can say, depends on how gruesome the murder is. Yeah, let's get to it. Number two, yeah. I was hoping it would be quieter. Number three, I wish my career didn't start with a death. <laughs> or number four, I'm pleased to be able to put my mind to something. Mm, that implies that something is bothering her. Mm, Makes mm -hmm. her sort of more interesting. But I want to get to the action. Let's do number one. Depends on how gruesome the murder is. I reply, shoving my hands deeper into my pockets. She <laughs> purses her lips and sighs. Then it's going to be a terrible day, I'm afraid. Oh, it's very gruesome. Okay, I'm listening. <clears throat> it's that bad. I'd say so, but then I'd... I've never actually seen a murder before. She dares a glance down to the street. Down... Oh, down the street at the scene, though it's half hidden by white-clad crime scene technicians. The techs all busy them themselves, placing down yellow tags and measuring out every inch of space. 
there's the occasional bright flash as they take photos. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, a voice stops us before we move. I need to know what's, what is going on. I demand to know. Tina's grip on her belt tightens and I let out a drawn breath. I'm the landlord of these apartments. The man, an older gentleman in a crisp gray suit, sweeps an arm upward at the soaring, crumbling building beside us. Well, this sucks because we also want to know <laughs> what's going on here. Yeah, just get we to don't the have the answer scene. yet. Just give me a minute, okay? Yeah. It's the first day on the job. <laughs> they forced me into this anyway. <laughs> You're getting it, Marius. You're doing it. Yeah. Uh, we can see number one. Not exactly something to be proud of, sir. Number two. You're a businessman, not a policeman. So please stay back. Number three. Demands will get you nowhere. <laughs> Number four, I'm sorry, sir, but we can't give out details at this time. Mm, sorry, cop option. <laughs> but it's sort of the most professional sounding. And it's, uh, all, it's so clever, right? Yeah, sorry, we can't give out details. Mm, technically true, because you don't know any details <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh, there's also a fifth, fifth option ah, okay. to just ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that as well, but I, I want to say I'm sorry. Sorry, uh -huh. sir. I'm sorry, sir, but we can't give out details at this time. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that a bunch. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm really sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I, I gotta go. I'm sorry, sir. I'm so sorry. I hope you're enjoying this video, everyone. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> okay, go on. I'm sorry, sir. I reply. My tone is light and polite as I can make it. But we can't give out detail at this time. <laughs> Tina places a hand on my shoulder. You go on ahead. I'll deal with them. That's a... <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? Is this just me? Or, or do you also get these strong romantic interests? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> with the 100%. hand on the shoulder? That's not what policemen do, right? I mean, okay. Like comforting us. They, go on, come on. I'll take this. They were free. partners. Yeah, but so there is some famili familiarity between them. Still, that. but like, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, that's, I'm it, just noticing I, this. I agree, though. That yeah, okay. Definitely. The way she was described, yeah. Mm -hmm. there was I can't some... pin it down either. It's just the vibe I'm getting here. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So uh, you go on ahead. I'll deal with them. All right. It's not your job to settle this lot anymore, detective. Good, Tina. You know your place. <laughs> <laughs> they forced me into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I know you wanted this job, Tina. <laughs> but the major forced me. He gave me the address that yeah, was. I'm thought. sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right. Oh, God, man. We're never getting through this. Uh, I throw her a grateful <laughs> nod as she moves towards the landlord with a stern frown. Her tall, statuesque figure is hidden behind the stiff, unshapely, dark blue uniform. Her pretty features contrast against the heavy belt in which she wears. Yeah. Just saying. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to oh, keep yeah. harping on this point, but just oh, yeah. saying. It's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like her more when she is dressed less. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'd say this is some <laughs> heavy male gazing going on, but we're a bored woman, so <laughs> I don't know what kind of gaze it is. Not yet, anyway. Oh uh, yeah, but I have high hopes. If I'd known her for before becoming such good friends as part of. <laughs> <laughs> Euphemism much, <laughs> you Lieutenant Langford? <laughs> Sorry, detective, I should say. Oh. Anyway. Um, if I'd known her before becoming such good friends as partners, we can say number one, I might have made a move. I'm only attracted to women. <laughs> number two, I wouldn't have made a move. I'm only attracted to men. Or number three, I might have made a move. I'm attracted to men and women. Mm. <laughs> I guess we want options, right? Mm -hmm. I think number three is the best. Okay. Attracted to both. I shake away the thought, turning to head towards the crime scene. It's not far before I stumble to a stop, holding up my hands to keep balance as a technician walks in front of my path. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't stop. <laughs> the woman clicks her tongue at me before continuing to bend down. What does that mean? 
like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you got it. Uh, but what does that mean in that context? I, I think people it's just, don't do that. No, but I, I've seen that before as a sign of annoyance. But more like, come on, let's go. That could like that. Be it. But then you do two and it's rude. You don't do that to a new detective. Yeah. I'm awaiting some response here. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, continue. I'm obsessing about details, but this is what you get on this yes, channel. This, this is story. what we do, and this is one of seven pages we're going to read today. <laughs> 1.6 million <laughs> words. <laughs> the saga that is literally infinite. <laughs> Not figured, anyway. Uh, Come on, please go on, Vincent. The woman clicks her tongue at me before continuing to bend down and retrieve a piece of trash carefully storing it in a clear plastic bag and sealing the top. I move forwards once more, my path like a dance as I make my way through a maze of yellow tags and disgruntled technicians. Are they all disgruntled? I the guess. Nobody's happy to be at a murder or crime scene. Or a technician, apparently. Yeah. I avoid coming up against the wall, which is slick with, with something I don't even want to think about. Thankfully. Th wait, that's a very Lovecraftian description. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, the color out of space, it was uh, indescribable. <laughs> but I, I don't feel it's quite earned. I need a little bit more of an image of what, I mean, what is on that wall. I assume blood, but who knows? It could be a picture of like, <laughs> the mayor or something. Yeah. <laughs> something you don't want to think about. Yeah, or a mayor yeah. of uh, the, the picture of your old partner. And, yeah. you know, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, please. Thankfully, I make it <clears throat> past the bus busiest part to find Dr. Turner crouched over the body. He looks up at me and frowns. We don't know this character yet, right? No. Yeah, the other okay. was Dr. Murphy. Yeah, you're right. He looks up at me and frowns. Sorry, this has to be your first sorry, this has to be your first case, Kira. Yeah. It's pretty amazing to think I delivered you as a baby okay, what What? It's, Wait. It's pretty amazing to think I delivered you as a baby and now here you are, <laughs> as a peer. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm just being stupid. In my mind, I just got the image that this person as a baby <laughs> <laughs> delivered her somewhere and it was very strange yeah that, that would have been very strange this per dr turner is presumably much older than kira I and hope helped so. kira's mother deliver kira yes. into the world oh, yeah exactly okay. so this is presumably some kind of like a uh, father figure or you know like a grandfatherly kind of wisdom teacher role mm -hmm. that's the vibe i'm getting yeah but it's also man that is a weird line to start the conversation on a murder <laughs> you're right yeah <laughs> it is a, but i mean this is just this town right it might just be normal here uh, yeah. everyone knows everyone they're constantly saying like oh, i remember when i delivered you <laughs> yeah, that's how he always starts any conversation he but, gets into it gets perhaps. old fast yeah <laughs> it's just welcome. remember when i <laughs> delivered you <laughs> maybe he delivered everyone in the town <laughs> He's the only <laughs> midwife or obstetrician here in Wayhaven. And he talks to everyone about it constantly. This is just how small towns work. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so it's pretty amazing to think I delivered you as a baby and now here you are as a peer. <laughs> His pride in me is dulled somewhat due to our meeting over a dead body. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> she understands our problem with this. <laughs> Yeah, we know this. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird when he's like looking up at you. I'm so proud of you, Kira. <laughs> Your first body. <coughs> Dr. What a time Turner. to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> God. Oh. Uh, God damn it. Okay. Oh. Uh. <laughs> His pride in me is dull somewhat due to our meeting over a dead body. The gloomy night of the morning makes the grey peppering his short black hair seem lighter. Yeah, he's old. And his that out. deep brown skin a little more aged than usual. All right. Another romantic interest. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't get those vibes at all. No, uh, not yet. A quiet punctuates the air between us. All right. Dr. Turner turns to look over the still figure at his feet. I love it. 
she, he says, it's pretty amazing to think I delivered you as a baby and now here you are as a peer. And she just looks at him. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. We, don't, we aren't responding, right? Respond at all. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty realistic, though. It's, yeah, absolutely. Like, what are you talking about? He, he, he's just being way too <laughs> personal, maybe, all the time. Uh -huh. And, like, oversharing and being emotional. And Kira just is being a professional about it. It's just, okay, just, just mm -hmm. ignore it, you know? Yeah. It's a bit awkward. Uh so we can look closer at the body. We mm -hmm. can say, do you know who the victim is? Or number three, can they be covered yet? Give them a little peace. What? No, this is not what policemen do. I love this is like disco. You, the game allows you to be a horrible police <laughs> person. Um, uh -huh. I think it's totally reasonable to just ask him who this is. Yeah. I think so. Probably weird that she doesn't know, but still. I mean she just arrived, right? It's but, a first okay. case. No, no, no. But um, am I getting this right? This might be important. She is an, a longer time resident in Weyhaven, right? Yeah. She was a mm -hmm. policewoman, then got promoted mm -hmm. now to a detective. That's new, mm -hmm. but she knows the town, right? And yeah, she knows but, Turner and stuff. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, if the, uh, the dead person is laying face down, for example, and she just doesn't okay, yeah. see the face. Sure, you're right. Yeah. We don't know that. Okay, so, what does he say? Do you know who the victim is? Uh, I should also say, compared to Choice of the Dragon, um, this novel always puts our choice at the top of the page. Of the oh, Dragon really? Didn't do that. How do you feel about that? What's uh, the effect? It's a bit weird because it's it just the same line shows up twice, basically. But it's not, not bad. Okay. It's just because I read it out loud, I notice it more. I think if I would just read it for me, it wouldn't notice it at all. Okay. Uh, do you know who the victim is, Doctor? I haven't had a proper look at them yet. I had to wait until those city boys were done, he says, and I note the glare he throws towards the crime scene text. Wayhaven is too small and quiet a place for those types of people, so when a major crime happens, they are sent down to aid from the big city. It's the first time this has happened in my lifetime, and the city techs and small town people obviously aren't mixing well. Turner places his hand beneath the body before rolling it over. I mm. wince a you little. You are right. Yeah. I wince a little at the dull thud that sounds as it topples over completely. A reaction noted by the keen, if aging, doctor. I don't recognize the woman spread on the trash lined street before me. Her blond, blond hair matted and her freckled pale skin marred with bruises. Neither, it seems, does the doctor. You don't know her? I ask. Nope, he replies. I don't think she can be from Wayhaven. Well, case closed, I guess. <laughs> yeah, must be another <laughs> problems. But this is probably Dr. Murphy, right, <clears throat> from the prologue? Um, Possibly. Although, was, like, wasn't that a guy? I think so, yeah. Is it really but doing the thing earlier we said it hopefully wouldn't do? <laughs> this is a completely different murder? Maybe not. I mean, it might be a completely different murder by the same yeah, okay. perpetrator. Yeah, yeah, sure. I would um, take that. That's okay. Yeah. Um, nope, he replies. I don't think she can be from Wayhaven. I see to pretty much everyone's health here, and I have never seen her before. I give a nod of understanding and look back at the lifeless yeah. woman. If Turner didn't deliver you, he basically doesn't know you. <laughs> yeah, you don't <laughs> exist <laughs> yeah. He's like, has face blindness for people he didn't hold yeah, as a baby. first 30 years of his life, Pretty tough, but yeah. after that, it got better. <laughs> That's how he builds relationships. <laughs> what a wild character. <laughs> I bet he's the killer. Uh, no, possibly. probably not. Uh, we can turn away from her, we can clench our jaw and hold our gaze, or continue looking without issue. <laughs> hey, continue looking without issue. Yeah, there's no problem. Actually, I guess we're, it implies that we're sort of cold, Vincent. Are we sort of cold? Let's do number two. Let's have trouble. Oh, okay. Let's interesting. Interesting. Yes. So we clench our jaw and hold her gaze. Yeah. I clench my jaw at the side of her pale form, but I continue to stare at it. At. In case. Okay. But I continue to stare at in case it might reveal something. Bit of a typo here. Yeah. Forgivable. <clears throat> Not easy seeing your first body, is it? 
Dr. Turner says quietly, his wrinkled face creased deeper in sympathy. I just can't believe there's been a murder here in Weyhaven. My mm. words come out in a confused mumble. I know what you mean. The last time there was violence in this town was back in my grandfather's day, he says, shaking his head. Mm. His thin framed glasses wriggle down his nose. He pushes them back up and shrugs. Can you give me the time of death? I ask. That's not my call to make, he replies, bristling slightly with his words. That's your man's drop back at the lab. He mm -hmm. doesn't bother to hold back the disdain in his voice, obviously not pleased at having you having to give you responsibility to another city boy. Mm. I'm only here to make sure the body is really dead. <laughs> And we can say, number one, make sure she is dead. She was a person, not a bo not just a body. Mm. Number two, hopefully it won't take long to find out more about it. Number three, the quicker we can clear this up, the better. Mm. Or number four, at least we can move her out of the sight of that crowd. Okay, that's interesting. Mm. I don't like number one. It's empathetic, but too much. So this will not let you be an effective detective if you yeah. if you get too caught up in this stuff. Also, he's a doctor. I assume there's some empathy in him. Yeah, I mean, so he seems like an empathetic guy. Yeah, and, and we are here and to clear up this murder mm -hmm. and bring justice to this woman, right? Yeah. But uh, you don't have to get so personal. It's not helping. So then, if not number one, what was number three? Uh, the quicker we can mm. clear this up, the better. No, I think I like number two. Do you have a preference? Uh, hopefully, I it won't take long to find out more about it. Yeah, that's fine. It's sort of a non-statement, but it's fine. Mm. Yeah, but all of them sort of are. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully it won't take long to find out more about it. Yeah, he says, giving a tense smile. An unsolved murder isn't the kind of thing you want hanging around you at the start of a career. I, <laughs> I guess not. I throw him a stare and he chuckles slightly. <laughs> Sorry. He turns to face the text behind him, their mask-covered faces giving them an eerie look. You can take the body away now. He then strides away, down the street to where his black sports car is parked. Good luck with it all, Kira. He calls back with a slight wave of his hand. Do, uh, hold, hold on, Do, can you tell us how he died, at least? No, what? I mean, we had the option to ask, and we chose to ask Did if we? he knows who that is. And he didn't, and that was it. Oh, that was really the option? How did he die? How did she die? I think so. Wasn't that the first option? I might remember wrong. Yeah, maybe. I, but on a, it's it's I a reasonable mistake to make, right? I to assume guess. that you can then also ask the other question. Absolutely. I expected that to come up sort of naturally in yeah. the fact that we as a detective are talking to the one doc the doctor at the scene. Yeah, he might, he might just be a philosophical doctor. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but also... Um, it might be a the job of one of the technicians, right? Because yeah, I hope we'll like still the, find out. Yeah, the time of death is also there. That's right. Area yeah. of expertise. So. Still, I want to know now. Yeah. I want more information quickly. Game, yeah. give it to me. Also, one more thing I noticed: the technicians from another town showed up before us, which I find. Are they though? No, like they are from the big city. They are. Yeah. The that's one, what it says. Yeah. Okay, that's a bit. I see your plan. Yeah, just, just, uh, it's kind of a <clears throat> plot error or whatever you want to call it. Hmm. Yeah. So let's go on. Find out anything useful from the dock? Tina asks as she moves back to my side. We both watch for a moment as the techs move forward to throw a white cloth over the victim. Hmm. We'll know more when Wa Vada takes a look at her, I reply. Are you okay getting statements from the witnesses? Sure, she replies. Mm. I've already started on it. I give a nod of appreciation. Take Douglas from the station if you need help. I'd have better luck getting help from a parrot than from that boy. She scoffs. What's the name? Douglas? <clears throat> Douglas, yes. Oh, Douglas is a joker, apparently. Mm -hmm. He's not to be trusted with responsibilities. And a boy. 
I guess. So but I don't think he's an actual no, but boy. A, a young he's not police officer. world's greatest boy <laughs> detective. And some, I don't think that's this kind of story. No, but I assume he's a younger police officer. Not sure, yeah. And his... acting boyish, right? Irresponsible. Possibly, yes. Uh, yeah. She moves away, her pad flipped over in preparation. With the crowds, the technicians, and the sheer amount of rubbish still littering the alleyway, I'm not sure how much more I can get from the crime scene. <laughs> really? We hardly did anything. Yeah, we, we, I honestly what? don't have a good picture of what this crime scene is in my mind. This, like, she I mean, keeps okay. talking about the trash <laughs> and stuff on the wall that she doesn't want to even think about. <laughs> yeah. And we don't know who died here. And we don't know why, why anyone even thinks that this person is dead. I guess they're not moving. Yeah, but we don't but, know like, why they died or when they died or who they are. Yeah, like or obvious wounds or impacts and, and stuff. I don't know. Is this a dismembered corpse? It was implied earlier that this is a very gruesome scene. Yeah. But so far, no gru has been, you know, presented to me. I mean, are we, we, we looked at the murder victim, right? And yeah, we then, had to clench <clears throat> yeah. to do so. But even then, we didn't really get a description or anything. Okay, I guess maybe sometimes, I mean, um, like um, novels and stuff don't want to be too explicit, right? I depending mean, yeah, also but, on mm, your age group that you're targeting sure. i can live with that i guess sure yeah you don't want to say it's... blood and gore and stuff and it's just you want to just imply it i guess it's successful in uh, uh, implying that stuff yeah but it's it a... might be a lovecraftian <laughs> scene here we're dealing with but it's a novel about a murder and we haven't talked about any murder stuff yet like this has to come up right Eventually. I mean, and maybe it, it will. Yeah, I was just <clears throat> hoping for it a bit earlier. Yeah, guess. and yeah. I, I don't know. This feels um, a bit weird. So, uh, with the crowds, the conditions, the sheer amount of rubbish still littering the alleyway, I'm not sure how much more I can get from this crime scene. All right, we're yeah. done here. This is how Wayhaven police are operates. A great detective. We are <laughs> top one detectives in Wayhaven. I guess it is kind of realistic. Is it? But in I, the mm. sense that small town police departments are, they would sort of be, I think, a little, often are, a little bit outclassed with stuff like this, right? Uh, Making I, lots of procedural mistakes. I guess, yeah. <clears throat> That's actually, a, would be a fun thing to play through, like, overwhelmed detective. Mm. <laughs> anyway. I begin to head out of the street and back towards my car. Officer Langford, I, I mean detective. My shoulders instantly hunch at the voice. Mm -hmm. And I roll my head from side to side to release a sudden tension before turning to face the source of the call. Bobby Marks, I say. Mm. Why am I not surprised to find you here? Let me guess, it's the town reporter. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Bobby, being the only journalist in there the small town. There you go. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Also, <clears throat> totally a reference to Bobby Briggs, right, from Twin Peaks. You'd, oh, you didn't watch mm. that show, right? I did, just not okay. the entirety, but I watched yeah. like a good okay. bit. He wasn't a journalist there, but mm -hmm. he was kind of a troublesome character. No, also, that's a great name. Bobby Briggs? Yeah. Yeah, now, I agree. Bobby, being the only journalist in the small town, leaps on any kind of gossip he can, <laughs> whether it be true or not. This is probably the closest to real news he's ever had. Bobby also happens to have a reputation as a giant pain in the ass. Still, as far as my relationship with him goes, number one, I've only met him a few times. Number two, unfortunately, he also happens to be my ex. Oh, nice. I was going to say I get other love interest vibes, but ex is much better. Or number three, he's an ex-friend. Is friend in quotes? No. Okay, then I'm not so but, excited. Uh, what does that mean, ex-friend? What is this? Elementary school? You no longer invite him to your birthday parties? Something like that, I would assume, yeah. Or right. they had a falling out for some reason. Are there more options? I keep interrupting nope, you. that was it. Okay. He's absolutely our romantic ex-partner. I feel like every option we have to take on more romantic baggage. It's like you don't even know me, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's this see is, how many this lovers is we have. So had. much more exciting <laughs> than Choice of the Dragon because, like, we didn't have like a girlfriend we, or whatever. We couldn't fuck as a dragon, and that was the <laughs> whole problem of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I get you it. know, relationships are interesting. Mm -hmm. True. Um, unfortunately, he also happens to be my ex. He also happens to be my ex. I thank myself daily for getting out when I did. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, the daily. 
<laughs> yeah, every morning and every evening, right before and after prayer. <laughs> Paul is a horrible person. <laughs> Oh God, I kind of feel sorry for Kira. This might be not be good for her to stay in the town. Yeah. Maybe that's why she didn't want the promotion because she would have to interact with Bobby more. Oh God, what have we done? Well, let's see how much of a terrible person he actually is. Yeah. The man would do anything he, gets, uh, he can to get ahead, including stealing all of my essays in college and using them at, as his own. Wow, dick and move. While we were dating. That is indeed a dig move. Yeah. <clears throat> As if the bribes to find out extra information from some of our volunteers aren't enough, Bobby also likes to wriggle his way into people's personal lives and report it to everyone in town. What a slimy little snake Bobby is. Yeah. He is a terrible person. <laughs> We're so judgmental. <laughs> we just got one side of the story, okay? Yeah, but... Our it side. It is the right side. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, we can say number one. But the past is the past, and I have no issue with him now. Mm. Number two, it's hard to be around him, but I won't let him see that. Oh, that's good. Number three, the grudge I hold for him will never leave. <laughs> that's a bit strong. I don't know. Number four, I won't give him the pleasure of even thinking about him anymore. Uh, that's going to be hard, because we're talking to him. Then I, I think... <clears throat> Earlier with the wall, we probably just saw Bobby standing there. <laughs> that is quite possible. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, I, what was the number two? It's hard to be around him, but I won't let him see that. That's, some, to me, the most interesting one. Okay. Pick that one. It's hard to be around Bobby, but I won't let him see that. The few times we've bumped into each other, I try to just ignore him completely before the mem memories resurface. He grins at me as he approaches. His phone held out like a microphone. What's happened here? Can't you tell? Uh, can you tell me? No, I can't. I reply curtly, pushing the phone back as he trusts it closer. Nothing at all. No, nothing at <laughs> we all. We don't know anything. Is the problem? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing. Look at the wall, man. That's weird, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. We gotta go. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> No, nothing at all, I repeat, dipping beneath the barrier and heading for the sanctuary of my car. Not even for an old friend? I shudder at the way he says old friend. He probably puts friend in quotation marks. Yeah. Once again reminding me of my error in judgment in college when we dated. Yeah. And we can say number one, no, definitely not. Number two, if I had anything, you would be the last person I'd tell. <laughs> Number three, since we are such old friends, you should believe me when I say no. Number four, you know I can't say anything. I think that's the best one. Yeah, that's sort of professional. Professional, right? yeah. Also, we, we just said we wouldn't let him see that what's going on. Yeah, us, you're so. right. So be more closed off. Yeah. <clears throat> You know I can't say anything, I answer, trying to keep a calmness about me. I apparently don't manage it, judging from the triumphant smile he throws at me, obviously pleased at getting under my skin once more. Mm, he noticed. God damn it. Come on now, Kira, Bobby coos. You wound me with such a cold reply. <laughs> Goodbye, Is he Bobby. Being played by Everett Clare. <laughs> you wound me, Harry. <laughs> Totally Everett line. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Go watch our disco playthrough. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, goodbye, Bobby. I say with finality, marching the last few paces to my car. I yank open the door and sink into the silent solace of the front seat. Mm. Bobby continues to shout muffled, muffled pleas through the window. <laughs> so I turn on the radio and <laughs> strap on my seatbelt. This is a weird town. <laughs> I rev the engine loud enough to be sure no one doubts my resolve to run them over if they don't move. <laughs> if David Lynch takes the script and makes a show out of this, this will be a great scene. <laughs> where he's literally banging on her windshield, yeah. shouting, Kira, Kira. And you uh -huh. just turn on some like really sort of... Um, like not very interesting jazz song that will be in the David Lynch version mm, of this. Yeah, yeah. It's somewhere in the background. That's the wall mixed moves. way too high. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, the sea of spectators quickly parts as I reverse out of the alley. All right. It will be a while before Solomon Vada, Wayhaven's, Wayhaven's only pathologist, has anything to report. So, so I we do have a pathologist in the town where <laughs> never anyone gets murdered. Yeah. Okay. I was sort of assume, it made I I actually thought it was uh -huh. kind of cool that they had to send it to the big city. I agree, implying that this small town doesn't have a department to determine cause of death and stuff. Yeah, I mean but this. Okay, maybe it's a private practice. <laughs> we just settle down here. You know, I mean, okay, maybe I mean I assume this is like a small American town, right? I'm just uh -huh. assuming it's American. They're probably doing a lot of hunting and stuff. Maybe he's actually, they just call him the pathologist, but he's sort of like the town taxidermist or whatever. Mm, mm -hmm. Makes stuffed bears like for people. Part-time druid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting closer to Twin Peaks here. I like where, what you're thinking. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, so it will be a while. Da, da, da. Has anything to report? So I decided to take a quick brunch. I drive the car around to the swanky modern side of town. All right. The red brick factories that make up every foundation and building in Wayhaven have all been given a coat of fresh white or classy gray paint in this area. Tidy shop fronts line the streets, each with a scripted scrolling shop name running across the top of the door. The square is the center of this modern hub, and I pull up to park beside the bakery. Getting out, I try not to break my ankle on the aesthetically pleasing but treacherous cobblestone street. Thankfully, the wet, slushy blanket of leaves that covers the road of Wayhaven have long ago been clear, cleared away from the square. I doubt the leaves even had a chance to touch the ground before someone was plucking them up and throwing them out. The bakery is surprisingly empty. I stumble to a stop inside the doorway as a waft of hot air lined with a scent of fresh bread embraces me. Good morning, Kira. Mm. Haley, the bakery owner, greets me with a grin. Her ivory cheeks flushed red, and a ring of white blonde hair just visible beneath the red and white checkered chef's hat. What can I get you? Other romantic interests? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, I'm not the only one. <laughs> also, I don't know how you feel, but uh, I think there's a lull in the pacing here. At this point, I need a hit, like some kind of dramatic thing. I was hoping, right, some kind of twist or whatever. I was hoping we would go to the bakery and the killer is there or something, or mm. Kira gets jumped or whatever. Yeah. But maybe that's just me. Maybe it's a different kind of story. I feel like the fact that we have like nothing to go on, we have no way to theorize anything about the murder yet. Yeah, right. It's a problem. If there had been some kind of shocking detail from the murder, it would have been like I wouldn't have this need for a twist now. Yeah. But I'm still waiting for some kind of like obstacle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm also I'm looking for a cliffhanger, Vincent, and it's not giving me one. <laughs> it's my problem. I and I know. feel like with Haley, the bakery owner, we're not going to get one. But let's see. I'm, let's give it a couple more shots. I stare at the curved display and the pastry goodies spread behind it, the fresh warmth of them steaming the glass. And we can say, just a coffee, just a cup of tea, just a water, coffee and a pastry, Tea mm. and a pastry, or water and a pastry. <laughs> very like all the combinations are there. Yeah, I like it. It's a very important choice. You no, know, I actually right? think this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Like pacing aside, um, it's a nice way to characterize her, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, huh? Is she a tea drinker or a coffee drinker? But, I vote tea. Okay, I vote coffee, but just because like Twin Peaks has entire like I dialogue know. trees about coffee. Yeah, but for some reason, to me, this suddenly turned. <laughs> Turned into an English town. <laughs> oh, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> this is not some kind of Rosamunde Pilcher. Like, this, this is Cthulhu and stuff. I uh, don't know. It's like vampires already. But okay, tea or beverage aside, mm -hmm. there's then the choice, oh, do you have pastries with it? And I feel strongly that if you if she says, like, yeah, give me coffee and pastries, she's like very indulgent, right? That's almost gluttonous. It doesn't mm. feel very effective to me. But she also said she was stopping for a quick brunch. Yeah, you're right. But the coffee is... That's a strong statement, though. Coffee is food to me. Okay. Let's pick coffee, Vincent. Just a coffee? Just a coffee. Okay. First one. It's a strong choice. Mm -hmm. I 
Better just have a coffee, Haley. Thanks. She gives a nod and turns to the machine, the bitter, fresh scent of the coffee beans instantly filling the small <laughs> shop. After a moment, she turns back and places the paper cup down on the counter. On the house. Are you sure? Oh, wow. She nods. That's a bribe, technically. That is no, correct. I don't know. I'm just making um, shit up. Or she's uh, just as in love with us as we are in love with her. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> are you sure? She nods. I heard you're going to need it. But mm. with uh, that murder and all, she grimaces and wipes her hands on her apron. spread quickly, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, guess word gets around quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't surprise you, she says, chuckling. It's worse than when we were in, sh in school. I nod in agreement. There's a saying in Wayhaven that if you don't know what's going on, you just have to ask the person next to you. That's in a saying? In Wayhaven, apparently. Okay. Insula is an understatement. At least I know it's you out there protecting us, she says with a genuine smile. She's nice. I give a slow nod. I joined the police force because... Number one, yeah. I wanted to help people and make them feel safe. Number two, it was the best career in Wayhaven that <laughs> could put me um, could put my mind to use. What a sentence. Number three, with my family so against the army, the police was the next be best thing. <laughs> okay. Number that four. That implies cool weapon skills. <laughs> <laughs> Which I kind of like. You, you are correct. Yeah. So, uh, number four, nothing happens in Wayhaven. It seemed like an easy job. <laughs> no, that's sort of lazy. Number five. It gave me a badge, and that badge gains me free stuff and favors. Oh, that's corrupt. Mm -hmm. Number six. I like a job with structure and defined rules. Yeah, that, may, that sounds like Kira. Number seven. This job allows me to use my scientific skills. There were no other jobs like that in the city. Mm. And the last option. I had a rather rebel rebellious youth. It was either the police force or jail time. Oh, that's interesting too. Mm. So uh, my problem here is I'm trying to um, align this choice with um, this thing we said about how we didn't want to be a detective. Mm -hmm. Right. And I feel like saying, um, oh, I need structure and stuff. And I'm like, that paints a coherent and interesting picture. Right. And it's almost like she refused the detective promotion or uh, didn't want it because there's too much freedom. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She liked the beat and the structure. And now she has to make actually her own choices and stuff. And that that's a really interesting char mm. char character to me. Yeah. Absolutely. I you agree. agree. That's let's a let's great just point. pick it. Also, Vincent, yes. I wonder, with these choices, does the game in the background track stats and allocate bonuses and well, maluses to them? There is a show stats button. Should I click it? Just yeah. See. Let's see. Show stats. Uh, personal information. Name, Kira Langford. Personality. 50% charming, 50% intimidating, 50% ah. impulsive, 50% cautious, 43% uh, sarcastic, 57% <laughs> genuine. Okay. 62% uh, friendly, 38% uh, stoic, Okay. 58% easygoing, 42% stubborn, mm -hmm. and then we also have traits. Oh, that's new, right? Yeah, that's uh, heart, 35%, compared to mind with 47, then optimist at 45, and pessimist at 55, mm. and team player at 45, uh, at 54, uh, and independent at 46. Okay. This uh, traits is a bit weird. I don't understand the difference between traits and stats because some of the traits you read were also binary opposites, like optimist and pessimist. Uh, yeah, they are all... All binary. Yeah. So yeah. charming and intimidating, impulsive and cautious, sure. fantastic, genuine. But you said traits, right? And like the first pairs you read are stats. Uh, there's uh, personality. Right. And uh, then there are traits. Exactly. And what's the difference? It's I don't know. Just a kind of grouping, I think. Okay. I can live with that. Yeah. I also, also tend to overthink things. Have you noticed? And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, also, I should say, yeah. there. so th this is the, the personal stats. Right. And I believe there's also professional stats, team stats, and oh, wow. show relationship stats. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs>
<laughs> the third goal overall is too much. I don't need to know all that. All right, it's but just, it's I okay. do notice how in mm -hmm. the personality, uh, am I wrong? There's some overlap, right? It, it's all about like charming and friendly. That's sort of the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know now in dialogue choices. It's not very unclear to me. Oh, is this boosting friendly or charming? Right? Uh, but okay, but if you look at the opposite, right? It's charming and intimidating. Yeah. But then it's friendly and stoic. Sure. I find intimidating and stoic are much stronger choices. Mm -hmm. They really differentiate. The good parts, not so much, right? Yeah. But if it, I'm presented with a dialogue choice, and I can probably tell whether this is intimidating or just stoic, but mm -hmm. it's just something to keep in mind. I do like how this game, as opposed to Choice of the Dragon, doesn't tell us. <laughs> our favorite so far, yeah. um, does not tell us what's happening. It's mm -hmm. just this kind of... If, if it's a choose-your-own-adventure novel... I don't think I want to be taken out of the narrative that much. Yeah. Yeah. It works better this way. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, what's the next choice? I don't think we're going to get a cliffhanger, Vincent. Uh, I wanted a career with defined rules and a structure in place. Right. The police force seemed the best option for that. How was I to know the worst crimes if I would have to deal with... What? How was I to know the worst crimes I would have to deal with would be vandalism and graffiti? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Makes, well, yeah. there was that time Mila Evans knocked her tennis ball through Jake Marshall's window, but that was all an accident. Mm -hmm. Guess I'll have to dust off the book detailing the procedure for investigating murders. <laughs> I grab up my goods, coming out of my thoughts. <laughs> Is it on page one, chapter one, determine cause of death. Yeah. Talk to doctor. <laughs> yes. Um, Check the victim, victim's pockets. Anything. <laughs> Look at the wall at the cry anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I grab up my goods coming out of my thoughts. Thanks for this. With a grateful nod, I leave the shop and attempt to traverse my way over the cobblestone once again. All right. I'm just about to sip my drink when my phone buzzes. Ah, Verda's name highlighted on the screen. With a sigh, I put down my things, start the engine, and make my way over a couple of blocks to the station. Oh, she just ignores the call? I guess? I mean, Verda, isn't that her, like, captain or something? Uh, so yeah, I was it, wondering, is that him or hmm. is that the pathologist calling us, perhaps, with the cause of death? Oh, yeah. So, I, either way, even if it's the... Uh, the the second doctor, yeah, um, he would probably work somewhere close to the police department as well, right? So, yeah, either way, she's ignoring the call because she's going there anyway. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. Maybe that's yeah. just how they do it in Wayhaven. And I am so excited, Vincent. What could it be? <laughs> what will be revealed to us? Uh -huh. Will it be the cause of death? I don't know. Uh, thanks for playing, Vincent. That's this I had more fun than dragons. Sorry, being judgmental towards dragons, but it's just such a power fantasy. Yeah, I I, I, I like this a lot more. Also, I I think I like the the somewhat noir though modern uh, story more, and I really like the way they handle stats more. Yeah, like, just don't, it's not so obtrusive. Yeah, don't I tell mean, them. To be fair, dragons was an earlier installment, right? Um, I think so. Yeah. And uh, like maybe they they sort of changed their. Mm -hmm. approach o over time yeah. also like maybe for some people dragons is the thing i don't know um i did say like i would wish for a, a, a character creation screen right <laughs> uh-huh and i think for dragons that would probably work for this one i thought this was fine picking it in the dialogue right it was not very obtrusive yeah but, but the, it was just, it wasn't so the much either just the hair stuff and stuff and so on yeah so now i'm wondering would I have cared if I didn't have these options? Like, just give me a character and go. Um, maybe. I, I personally for some of these choices. Yeah, maybe. I I I wouldn't have cared. But I mean, if you don't get to pick anything about the protagonist of a choose your own adventure novel, it's a bit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess. though that could happen. <laughs> it's fine. I just thought we had fun with making mm -hmm. this lady bald and uh, that is true. like having this romantic yeah. life that she has. Also, I think if there are no choices in regards to appearance i probably wouldn't have a desire to replay the book once i'm done yeah might and, be interesting how yeah. it changes when you're a completely different person with blonde hair yeah full head of hair 
Anyway, uh, thanks for playing, Vincent. Thank you mm -hmm. uh, for watching, everyone. Leave some comments if you enjoyed it. I want to thank again to the Joyce of Games Reddit for rec recommending. Uh, I think this was a very successful recommendation. Yes. Uh, like, uh, we enjoyed this. Good and um, good book. A good book, yes. I, uh, how many words, Vincent? How many millions of words? Uh, I think it was 400,000 or something. Yeah, so it's in the smaller uh, <laughs> bracket of uh, choose, uh, Choice of Games games. Yeah. Um, you can uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you can follow us on Twitter at makes underscore play. We're out of here. Bye. Bye-bye.